<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Monster Chiller Thriller Wine 12. I'm your ghoulish host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're killing that like button and subscribing to the channel. If you don't, then I'll come find you. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Uh, this year I went for something a bit different. I'm doing beer. It's not like I have not haven't done beer before, but I've just never done beer exclusively for Halloween. So I'm excited to do these beers. I chose three beers that have a mostly national presence. I'm not pairing anything with them. Just doing the beers on their own. Uh, maybe I'll think of things while tasting them. <laughs> uh, so why beer? Well, why not? Over the past couple years, being on the retail side of things has exposed me to a lot, and I do mean a lot of beers. I drink more beer now since uh, than I've done since pre-2009 when I started the show. So many cool beers out there to try, so I figured, why not? This show is a reflection of my studies and my interests, hence why I sometimes do things other than wine, and also why I don't necessarily follow trends and do the cool things, because. I don't care. This show is about what I'm interested in. Hopefully you're interested in it too. All right, so like my previous Halloween specials, I chose these beers based upon the label first. Did have a label that would fit the theme of Halloween. Also, I avoided beers that were too regionals, or too regional. I'm not saying you'll be able to get all these beers in all 50 states, but I avoided going like with say some Texas beers that don't have wide distribution. I do have two stouts and a hazy IPA. I didn't really see anything else the day I bought them to use. Ideally, I would have had three completely different styles. All right, being a beer-focused show, I'm going to give you a bit of a primer on beer, a primer, uh, then talk about each of the beers and then taste them all. So, try to do this as quick as I can. There are two main styles of beer. You have ale and lager. Ale tends to be more aromatic and with aromas of fruits and grass and brewed at a higher temperature. Lagers are typically less aromatic and are described as crisp and brewed at a lower temperature. They are also lagered or cold stored for a period of time. Now, how do you make beer? Well, here's the super simplified version. You start with hot water and a malted grain of some sort, usually a barley. This is called mashing and the mixture is the mash. It's where the starches are converted into sugar. Critical for fermentation, this mash is put into another vessel called the kettle. Traditionally made from copper, it is boiled to evaporate water and any remaining undesirable enzymes. Think of it as doing a sauce reduction. It's during this process called the boil that hops are normally added to what is called the wart. Uh, not a wart, not, not, not a wart on your hand, but wart, W-O-R-T. Anyway, uh, to make an IPA, you add judicious amounts of hops to the boil. Not the boil on your hands. Anyway, uh, the boiling releases compounds that gives us the bitterness. After this step, the wort cools down and then actually, then the actual fermentation happens in another vessel. So what makes it hazy? Well, instead of adding the hops to the boil, they are typically added after everything cools down, just before fermentation or during fermentation. Because of the cooler temperatures, the compounds that create the bitterness aren't created and the floral, fruity, and piney aromas are released instead. This is often called dry hopping. The lack of filtering is what gives the style the hazy name. Also known as Juicy or New England, hazy IPAs are extremely popular because they are much less bitter, bitter than a standard IPA. People say they don't like IPAs, may like a, a hazy, a hazy, a hazy IPA instead. Hazy maybe. Side note, hops and uh, cannabis are cousins. Hops just doesn't have the, the hallucinogenic stuff in it. All right, so we also have the terms double and imperial. That's a term for any beer with a higher than normal amount of alcohol. A normal beer is around, a normal beer is around four to 6% ABV, double or imperial, along with triple and quadruple, really have no legal definition, but you can think of a double as being around six to 8%, a triple being seven to nine, and a quad being more than nine. It's not precise and it's all up to the brewery to decide what these terms mean. IPA seem to move that notch a bit higher. So you'll see a double go as high as nine or 10%. You'll see IIPA on the label and with that first I meaning Imperial. And that's where we get the double IPA. I've never seen IIIPA. Usually you'll just see the word triple. 
I don't think I've seen one called a quad IPA, but I've seen IPAs with 11 or 12% or higher ABVs. These will, use, these will use the word triple a lot of times. The higher alcohol isn't directly related to the hop content, but that there was a higher concentration of sugar and the yeast that was used confirm it to a higher ABV. Trivia time. Beer and wine use the same species of yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, cerevisiae, something like that. I put it down there. It literally means sugar mold of beer. Okay. Okay, we got the basics of beer. I have the hazy here. It's an ale that's pale. Uh, what about the others? They're stouts. Stouts are very strong ales. The stout name refers to being a stout porter or a very strong tasting porter or dark uh, beer, not always strong in alcohol. Hops, while present, aren't driving the bus. The color comes from how much a grain or how much the grain is malted or kilned. The longer the process, uh, the darker the grain. Just like roasting coffee beans, the longer the roast, the higher the bitterness from the malt. So bitterness can come from roasting and or hops. You might be saying, but Mark, what's the IPA story? Okay, real quick, because the Grim Reaper here is effing thirsty. IPA short for India Pale Ale. Yes, it's related to beer shipped to India from England. The original pale ale that, was the IPA, that the IPA came from was brewed in such a way to survive... Uh, or rather than rather than age, up to a couple years. This beer this became the beer that eventually shipped to India. The higher hops content acts as a preservative. The acids from the hops, that's what makes the beer bitter, is that preservative. Just like high acid wines like Riesling, uh, I'll let you read the full story in the links in the description below. Okay, let's start with the Hazy IPA. It comes from the Destill Brewery there in Normal, Illinois. They have a restaurant there along with a beer hall, and they make a crap ton of beers. Their site also has a very, very long list of what are called rare and limited beers. It feels like that list is longer than their other beers. Their main lines of beers are Deadhead IPA, uh, the Deadhead IPA series, the Wild Sour series, Hard Seltzers, Core Brands, a variety of styles with that, the Dos Vidania, a series of higher alcohol barrel-aged beers, typically above 13% ABV. This is part of their Deadhead IPA series. It's called the Haze of the Dead Hazy Double IPA. So we know from this that this will be a more fruity or floral uh, beer that should not be clear. One thing I didn't talk about earlier was the International Bitterness Unit, or IBU. I won't go too much into it, but IPAs have higher numbers than most other beers. Even a hazy will have what looks to be a high number, but the fruit, floral, and pine aromas will kind of balance that bitterness. Think of how Riesling's or Champagne's sugar content balances the acidity, or even the balance between how much acid and sugar are in a Coke. All right, so let's just start checking out the stats. The Destil Brewery Haze of the Dead, uh, around $14 for a six pack. It is a hazy double IPA. The hops in it are Citra and Simcoe. Brewers, sometimes list hops on their IPAs like wineries list grape varieties. If you know the hops, then you can get an idea as to what to expect on the nose and palate. Though many breweries will also put those aromas and flavors in the packaging to help you out. Citra, well, produces a lot of citrus. Simcoe will add passion fruit, pine, and apricot. It's a 8.5% ABV, it's a double for sure. The IBU is 83, just about mid-range for an IPA. Ingredients, uh, these are so you have two row malt, flaked oats, pilsen malt, and wheat. For the purpose of the show, I won't get into all of these. I've already delayed tasting the beers long enough. I'll do more in-depth Freestyle Friday beer shows sometime next year. Next, we have Wasatch Brewery. They're out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Like Destil, they make a lot of different beers and have brew pubs. They were founded by Greg Scherf uh, in 1986 after he moved from Milwaukee in the early 80s to Salt Lake. Back then, we really didn't have a craft beer as we know it now. It's not that other craft breweries didn't exist back then. It's just that there wasn't the explosion of them in the 1980s. That happened later. Also note that I didn't mention when Destil was founded because, well, the website really didn't say. All right, here are the stats on this one. Wasatch Brewery Black O' Lantern. About 12 bucks for a six-pack. It's considered a seasonal. It is a pumpkin stout. The hops is Willamette. A typical stout, a typical stout or porter hop. 
it will bring herbaceousness, spiciness, florals, and fruit in general. The ABV is 6.66. I see what you did there. Their description mentions pairing an imperial stout with a pumpkin ale. The ABV is higher than a normal beer, so using imperial is in line. However, the label just says stout. The IBU is 31. The SMU is 87.5. Okay, so besides IBU, beer has a color value. The most common scale is the standard reference method, or SRM. The higher the number, the darker the beer. So this is a pretty dark beer since the scale really is tops at 40 plus. The last beer I'll be tasting is from Clown Shoes. They were founded in 2009 uh, in Boston by Greg Berman. They kept growing every year, expanding production and their lineup of beers. In 2017, they joined a larger employee-owned company called Mass Bay Brewing Company. Clown Shoes is known for being very creative with their beers, and this one is no exception. I chose this based on the label more than anything else. It has a four-armed monster on it. Now, a luchador isn't a monster, but a masked wrestler in Mexican wrestling known as Lucha Libre. Luchadores play both good and evil characters, not unlike American wrestling. The big difference is the mask. Not all Lucha Libre uh, wrestlers wear masks, but most do, and it's all about playing a character. This beer is part of their Kung Fu Ballet series. So far, there are three beers in the series, an origin story, Ancient Hills, and Luchador at Sunrise. Each tell the story of Master Clown Shoes, who challenges the leader of an upstart Kung Fu school to a duel and loses. He's shamed and ends up at a remote brewery in the mountains. Eventually, he is challenged into defending his new home against this four-armed monster called Luchador. It's creative, and it'll be interesting to see how they continue the story. All the beers are barrel-aged, so they are Asian barrels that were used in the production of different spirits. <laughs> anyway, something becoming more common in the craft beer world. More so than wine, but it does happen in wine. I'm personally not a fan of it in wine, but I've been enjoying it in beers. All right, here are the stats of this beer. Clown Shoes Luchador at Sunrise, about $12 for a 19.2 ounce can. It's a special release. It's part of their Kung Fu Ballet series. It is an imperial stout. It is flavored with cinnamon, vanilla, chipotle, and ancho chiles. It's aged in bourbon barrels. All right, beers aged this way tend to come across as more potent than they really are. Don't get me wrong, it's still an imperial stout, but when you drink beers like this, they tend to feel high in alcohol. Speaking of that, the ABV is 10.5%. It is a high alcohol beer. We're getting into low alcohol wine uh, numbers here, especially for something that's 19 ounces. Okay, so that's the lineup. Let's get to drinking. This Grim Reaper is thirsty after a long night of reaping souls. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, so I'm super excited to do this. I'm using wine glasses, mainly because I only have two really decent beer, uh, beer mugs. Not mugs, but... Uh, beer uh, glasses. Plus, I have those. Plus, I have the um, what you call it? The really big, big glass stein from Polliner for their Oktoberfest beer. If you watch my Psalm breakfast stuff, uh, you saw me pour a beer into there on purpose. I, I, I want to make sure I didn't like have the head overflow. All right, so um, we're gonna give myself a little bit more. It is my Halloween episode, and I don't spit on these shows. And I'm going to use a different glass for each for each uh, beer so that I don't have anything left over from the prior beer. Especially like something like this is going to be highly aromatic. And then we have two stouts. One stout says pumpkin. You know, so I just want to I don't want to mix and match these things. So highly aromatic. There is some pininess to it. You got some floral. You got some citrus. I mean, we have citrus in here. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's got your typical hazy IPA floral and fruit aromas along with a little pine, not quite pine resin. There's an IPA called resin and it is very resiny. Yeah, let's taste it. I like it. I think the pine comes through a little bit, a little bit more than some of the other stuff, but the fruits there, you know, I get, as far as citrus, I get kind of an orange flavor to it. There's a bitterness to it. 
So it's not that it's not bitter at all. I'm actually, the bitterness is coming from the back end. I mean, that was 83 IBU. I've had other hazy IPAs that were lower in, in bitterness, so they come across as smoother. But you have a juiciness to this instead of just straight bitterness to it. I don't know what the SMU color would be on this, but I would imagine it would be somewhere in the 20s. I, I, I know I posted a, uh, a chart next, you know, chart to show you what SMU was. So maybe if I um, hold this up and I put the chart next to it, how about I put it right here? So I don't know which side I'll put the chart on. And we can decide later what, what the color is. Yeah. It's tasty for sure. I'm going to enjoy drinking this the rest of the night. Real quick. You don't really, can't really tell, but these candles are actually lit. I don't know if I did any special effects, but they're lit. It's just that um, I, I don't really record in the dark anymore. I just put myself in black and white. So, hey, remember Horatio, right? Yes, I know Horatio isn't the actual skull. Anyway, but that's the skull's name because I, I called it that the first year, 12 years ago. And it stuck. Horatio, you want any beer? Nah, man, you have nothing to and just pour out. It's tasty. I'm going to put this off to the side. Let's go into the Black O' Lantern. Now, this one, I'm intrigued. Um, so, uh, brewed with pumpkin and spices. So, uh, there's a lot of these pumpkin ales and pumpkin stouts out right now for Halloween. Um, and, of course, you know, there's always the pumpkin spice latte stuff. And if you've watched my show enough times, you know I don't like coffee, but you're like, but well, Mark, stouts have coffee flavor. Yeah, they tend to have a bit of roasted coffee to them, but I usually put up with it. So uh, on the back, it says chocolate. I don't think I said that earlier. Uh, it says chocolate, pumpkin, velvety. And on the packaging on the, on the box, it says that. So that's kind of give you an idea of what to expect on it. Uh, it says, what kind of madman would cross an imperial stout with a pumpkin ale? Our brewers, as it turns out, this rich chocolate uh, Franken brew is dry spiced and scary good boo. Okay. Normally I don't read like the backs of wine labels, but the beer tells you exactly what's in there. So it's not as aromatic. I wouldn't say it smells like a pumpkin spice latte, but there is a touch of like that coffeeness, but it's more of a bitter chocolate than like a bitter hot chocolate that I smell rather than like coffee. And you do get the pumpkin, but it's not overwhelming. Let's hold it up for uh, color purposes. This should be a 40 plus. It is a stout. Yeah, the pumpkin isn't overwhelming. It's there. It's building right now. You get, first thing you get is, honestly, you, it kind of goes velvety first. And I think it's from, from the carbonation. And stouts in general will have that kind of, not quite milky head, though they will put lactose in a lot of uh, beers, whether they're stouts, as we get a milk stout from, or a lot of these sours, you'll get lactose in there. And it gives you that kind of milky, creamy um, uh, quality to it. But stouts in general tend to have that richness anyway. I don't think there's any lactose in there. If there was, they would have put it on the on the can. Then you get the bitter chocolate. It's got bitter dark chocolate. I guess that's where the black comes from, the black o' lantern, dark chocolate. Uh, and then the pumpkin's there. Um, as far as like a roasted coffee, it's it's really faint. So I mean, I'm gonna enjoy this one. It also feels a little boozy. I mean, it was. It was only 6.66% ABV. I do like that. I had an IPA uh, from a Texas brewery. Uh, it's called um, Neighbor of the Beast, and their ABV is 6.67. And it was 67 IBUs or something like that. It's really tasty. It's called uh, Lone Pint. Uh, so if you're in Texas, uh, you, should try, you should try all Lone Pint stuff. Their, their Jabberwocky IPA is really good. The, the Neighbor of the Beast is really good. Uh, they have a couple other ones. They, have, they had a white stout I tried. That was really weird to, to drink a white stout. You taste the stout, it's strong, but it's not dark. That's where I got the whole thing about it's not all, stout isn't always a dark beer, it's just a strong tasting beer. Yeah, I like it. It does feel a little light for a stout, but it's, it's good. 
All right, Luchador at Sunrise. Being Texas, and Luchador and Lucha Libre is a big part of what goes on here in the state. I figured, why not? And of course, I have the 19.2 ounce can and the highest ABV. And I literally need to finish all these beers tonight because I don't have a beer preservation system. I know there's some, I think, that exists where you can put like something on top of the can, like for a can, and you can kind of help preserve it or help keep it from going flat. But while I clean up, I'm going to be drinking beer. All right, so you look at the color. That's darker. That's definitely darker than the Black O'Lantern. I don't have much left of the Black O'Lantern. I don't know. They're, they're close, but I think, the, I think this one's a little bit darker. So I get, does it say chocolate? Because I get chocolate out of this. Let's look at the can, front of the can yet. Uh, cinnamon, vanilla, ancho, and chipotle. I don't, get, I don't get the chilies yet. The cinnamon, kind of. The vanilla, I think, is what I'm getting. Like kind of a milk chocolate, but vanilla. Yeah. I'm looking for the chiles, and they're there, but I'll probably get them on, on the palate more than on the nose. I don't get really any coffee, but there you can smell there's a roasting of the malt. And I'd say it's a little less aromatic than the Black Lantern. But look, look at it a little swirl. It, it makes it a little more aromatic. You got that really, so stouts, I know you can't really tell. Stouts tend to have like a really creamy head. Um, it's just what happens with stout. And let's taste it. <laughs> Whew. This is, I don't know if it's my first clown shoes ever. But if I've had a clown shoes before, it's been like one. And it wasn't this one. This is this is intense. Um, you got the bourbon barrel age going on. I didn't really get on the nose, but you, you get on the palate. But it's not overwhelming. Like some of these, you can really taste the you can really taste the spirit barrel. Especially bourbon. Um, some of it's a little overwhelming. This one is is actually pretty balanced. I was expecting something that tasted super potent. Um, like makes you, sometimes you, when you drink these beers that are Asian bourbon barrels, you feel like you're drinking whiskey, you're drinking bourbon. This is actually not, not like so bad. I don't want to say I'm disappointed in not having that boozy quality, but because I've had so many other bourbon barrel aged beers that are boozy, I was my expectation. That's not what's going on here. It's like balanced. It's well integrated. They didn't go over the top with it. It's like, you know, drinking a wine that uses new French oak or new American oak or a combination of it. But they didn't go over the top with it like the oak's there, but it's just there to kind of help guide things. And, you know, it's 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 not dominating. It's not dominating. The the two chiles in there, I, I, I can't necessarily tell the difference between them without tasting exactly both of them, but they're there. I've also had beers with... with the, with chiles in them and they get really spicy you're like whoa this is not super spicy vanilla is there i do get chocolate i get a roastedness roasted malt not necessarily coffee uh the cinnamon not so much but i can tell it's boozy like boozy on the beer side you know ten and a half percent you can feel the alcohol when you drink it i'm impressed not that I'm not impressed with the other two beers. You know, the Hazy IPA tastes like the Hazy IPA. It's delicious. It's a little different than some other stuff I've had. I like it. I'm definitely going to crush it. Um, the Black Lantern, I like it. Pumpkin, like I said, isn't my favorite flavor, but pumpkin's not overwhelming. I like it that it's more light. I'm going to try it again. Go back to it real quick. Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny because it's, it's funny to smell both of these together. You know, the different spices. And yeah, the pumpkin's there, but... I feel like I'm like more clove-like. Yeah. It's like more clove than anything else. Like this is truly a holiday beer. Like this is truly a Halloween beer. You can even say that because there's some clove to it, you can even put this into like a Thanksgiving or maybe even Christmas time. Uh, the hazy is just, is hazy. And it's not a, it's not seasonal. I mean, it refers to the, the Grateful Dead and Deadheads, not, not Halloween. Now having those two stouts, this is really enhanced. Wow. It's almost like a palate cleanser, to be honest. These are good beers. If you like beer, 
I like beer. I just don't talk about it a whole lot. If you like beer and you like these types of beers that have these extra flavors, it's not just like a stout. It's not just an IPA. So I know there's a lot of beer purists out there that go, oh, they, they age it in bourbon barrels. It's kind of like us wine people go, why are you aging in bourbon barrel? Like it's fine in a regular barrel. So I get it. There's probably some beer aficionados and beer snobs out there that are like, this beer is like an abomination. Uh, same thing for the Black Atlanta, that you're adding pumpkin flavor to it. I get it. The hazy IPA is just a hazy IPA. It's, 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 the hops that are using are more prominent as far as their fruity, floral, and pine designation rather than being traditional hopped and it's more bitterness and you're getting the flavor from the grains instead. But, I mean, they're all good beers for what they are. If you like these styles, you will like these beers. If you don't like these styles, well, you're not going to like them. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I like all three of these beers. I'm still in my experimental phase. I like, oh, it's got blueberries in it. Don't try the blueberry beers. They suck. Uh, you know, well, that blueberry pancake one, that was a little different. That pancake one I had for my birthday? <laughs> yeah. Now, maybe five, ten years from now, I might be like, ugh, no. But I don't know. But yeah, I'm in my experimental phase with, with beers. Kind of like my early phase with wine. You try all this cool stuff and... Maybe it's kind of extracted and overly adjusted and all that, but it tasted really good. Yeah. These beers, they taste really good. All right. Well, you know what? That's going to do it for this edition of Monster Chiller Thriller Beer. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and tell your friends until next time. Drink some beer, man. Gosh.